The fun haver is dead. Long live the no fun haver. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's only been 11 months since I last worked on the Fun Haver project, and there hasn't been a lot of progress. Uh, I cut up a perfectly good Bronco body and completely ruined it. It was an experiment, and I was trying something, and it ended up not working. So I went to eBay and I bought another Bronco body. And here's that body right here. Still in one piece. I haven't even taken out the LED lights, or any of the mounts that used to go on this new bright body. So, we're done with this now too. And here's where this project has gone. This is now the no fun haver. Originally I did want to build the fun haver on that Bronco body with this element gatekeeper chassis, but you know what? I'm just kinda over the Bronco. I've seen them everywhere now. I've built three of them. Just don't really feel like I've got a lot of creativity left. I didn't do it quick enough. And that's my fault. That's on me. So in the meantime, to keep something going with this chassis, I decided to take the new Proline Chevy Silverado pre-runner body and ruin it <laughs> by making this. I got this great inspirational photo, and this is actually a 3D rendering from an artist named Nick Foreman, and uh, I'll put a link down below to where you can see more of his stuff. He's got a lot of really amazing projects that he's done in CG that would make for really great RC projects, so I might end up doing a few more, but this one really kind of struck me and said, hey, you should do something like this with this brand new body this is what I did. It's really actually quite similar. When you look at the photo and then you pull it away, it's there's a lot of nods to the original artwork. And that's sort of the intention. I wanted to build something that uh, kind of looked like this old school patinaed pre-runner style truck. And I think I kind of accomplished that. There is a lot more to do. This is sort of not, hey, it's done. This is more of a, hey, I started it. And I'm back on the no fun haver. <laughs> so anyway, I did some modifications. I cut out the rear bed and built myself a metal cage. I brazed this using Scale Metal Supplies from Scale Metal Supplies and uh, built this whole hinged uh, back cage for the body. And uh, I think it actually turned out pretty good. There is a little bit of a, a steel bumper along the bottom there. It's all uh, 3 16 milled steel tube or mild? Mild or milled? I think it's mild. Yeah, it is. 3 16 mild steel tubing uh, works really great. And um, the bends all with my Oaken Shield tube bender. Where is that? This thing is amazing. Uh, 3D printed parts, yet uh, creates some very nice tight bends, as you can see. And uh, works really well. I use it all the time. And uh, my thanks to Josh from Harley Designs for getting one for me and sending it my way. Uh, it has become uh, something that I use nearly every time I braze. Some of these bends in here were a little complicated, a little bit beyond my scope of understanding, uh, but I asked my friend Josh, how do I do it? And then he told me, and then it worked. This whole thing ties into the body, so uh, it actually does mount, hard mount to the body with some uh, uh, three mil uh, tabs that are also from Scale Metal Supplies, and is mounted to the chassis using a couple of Scale Metal Supplies bumper mounts believe it or not. They actually worked really, really well, tied in nicely and uh, a very clean way of doing it. And because it's hinged, I can very easily get at all the electronics and the battery and everything underneath, uh, which I'm pretty chuffed about. I'll tell you that for sure. Of course, the paint was inspired by Nick Foreman's artwork. Very simple paint techniques to get this look. Uh, of course, the body is painted on the outside. Uh, you need to do that to get a nice patinaed look. And there are a few different layers of paint on here. Uh, this is all on point and pro line paint that I used for this process. Uh, I started with the navy blue on the back, but tied that all the way in through the front too, because I wanted to sand away some of the next top coat to get some of that blue to come through as if it's sort of just been aged. Next sprayed white and a little bit of turquoise, believe it or not, in order to get this sort of muddled, weathered white look. Uh, then did all of the graphics, uh, including this, my, my favorite, Chevro Ford logo. I know it triggers a lot of people, but I love doing it. I 
I think it's hilarious. I uh, also did some sponsor decals there on the uh, rear fender and some on the front as well. That's all just with uh, masks cut on my Cricut, uh, which is a very simple process. In fact, I think I will cover that in an upcoming episode of What's on the Bench, uh, because it is a very simple technique. If you've got a Cricut at home, if your wife or girlfriend or significant other has a Cricut or a silhouette, you should be using that to create your own masks for great paint work. It really is an amazing technique and so easy to do. Uh, so cannot stress that enough. If you've got access to a Cricut, start using one. I always sand back these logos, especially in the case of this truck because it is a weathered vintage patina truck. Uh, none, of these none of these logos would be super sharp. So I go back and sand them all down with about 600 grit just to make them feel as if they've been sort of aged a little bit along with the rest of the paint. Same thing to get all the blue to come back out after you've shot all the white. Now, the rust, it's a pretty interesting look, and I feel like it's pretty accurate. Uh, this was just paint that I mixed, Proline airbrush paint that I mixed in a little dish to get these varying brown colors. Uh, and uh, then I just put it all on with a sponge. I just used a little piece of sponge. I've, I've got it right here. <laughs> I just take little bits and pieces off of this 3M sponge washing pad, and I take little bits of sponge off and uh, dip them in the paint and then just apply them in a stippled pattern all over the body. I try to keep it as random as I possibly can and I use multiple shades of brown so it's never the same color twice. It always has a varying pattern to it so it doesn't look manufactured. It looks real. And uh, I think it actually looks really great on this truck. It looks amazing, if, if you ask me. Uh, another little piece of metal work a uh, tiny little pre-runner style bumper on the front there, which ties in very nicely with the Artful Dodgers uh, uh, skid plate here. That whole thing looks awesome, and I'm really, really happy with the end result on that, too. Uh, still working on a front body mount. That hasn't really been figured out yet. Uh, it's going to require a little bit of noodling, but I'd like to incorporate the SCX-10 III hidden body post mounts, and I think I can probably make that work with this body somehow. Uh, if we just kind of tie that in right there. I uh, did go over the grill with chrome and then I cut out some of the stickers from the Proline kit. I may end up going back afterwards and just dull coating those decals after I've uh, hit them with a little bit of heat so they contour properly. Uh, just, you know, on there for placement for now. And of course, I have to troll. I actually used one of my SBG license plates with the Chevro Ford decal on there uh, instead of a standard Chevy logo. Vanquish Methods, uh, these are the 101s in orange to match my reference photo, which I think it actually looks pretty spot on in that regard. I'll be sure to put links down below to all of the things I've used here. So if you are interested in building your own pre-runner, by all means, jump on board. It's going to be a fun build. Not a fun haver, though. <laughs> uh, these are the Nitto Grapplers from Axial. Another perfect match. And because it's got a Nitto sponsorship on it, it should have Nitto tires. Or maybe not. Maybe they should be BFGs. <laughs> For this large radius curve in the back of the cage here, I designed that to fit a spare tire. Uh, and that's going to sit in there nice and flat, sort of just like that. As you can see, I think that's going to be looking pretty cool. To get a nice big round curve like that in metal can be challenging. And Josh gave me a great tip. He said use some sort of like water bottle, big metal water bottle. Uh, I ended up using a coffee mug actually. Uh, but wrap some tape around it, uh, throw your piece of tube into the vise, and just bend it around that round object. And uh, it gives you exactly the curve you need. It worked out super well. For the back of this cage, there will be uh, some uh, accessories, and, and uh, I'll put a fuel cell and probably some sort of uh, radiator. I'm going to make them up in uh, Fusion 360, and uh, then we'll add those in later on. But... Uh, I'll, I'll maybe even add a few more tabs just so there's places for those things to actually mount to. Uh, but all in all, very pleased so far with the results of uh, kind of changing this whole build and making it something a little bit different. I'm pretty chuffed, I gotta say. It's it's definitely coming together uh, faster than the fun haver was, and this will probably be done in quite fewer than 11 months. 
Oh, I will try to incorporate a bomber interior. I think uh, that would look really good in there. This one was from an SCX-10 II uh, project car that I did for Axial Fest in like 2016, maybe? Yes, I've got a lot of old parts lying around. Uh, but I think that'll be a nice fit, uh, and it should it should sit in there pretty well. It won't it won't fill the whole interior, but it's pretty close. I think it'll look I think it'll look pretty decent. In there. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. I think it's got to have an interior. That's sort of where we've taken the Funhaver project. Now, my question for you, since I've ruined it by putting a Ford Chevy logo on a Chevy truck, what? should I put on the tailgate instead of Ford or Chevy? Give me another brand. Put your comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback. And I try to answer as many of them as I can. And of course, if you're enjoying this video and you like seeing wacky projects and projects that turn into other projects, <laughs> hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. If you are interested in learning how to braze, I do have a couple of videos here on the channel that go over the very basics of how to achieve some pretty decent effects. Uh, I will be sure to link to it right up here so you can go check that out at your leisure. Uh, it will help you build bumpers or cages or anything that you want to braze out of metal. There are a lot of good, helpful tips in that video and I urge you strongly to watch it and be careful because these torches, they can get away from you. I think I should get the metalwork media blasted, uh, and then maybe we'll add some sort of patina to it afterwards. I don't think the raw look is really good for this specific build. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased. I think it looks pretty good, and uh, lots of travel in this gatekeeper uh, trailing arm rear suspension. Uh, we may have to do some trimming to the body, especially on those front fenders. I think there's going to be a little bit of rub there. <laughs> One other thing to note on this body, this body is set up for a 12.3 inch wheelbase. That's what Proline intended when they built it. The gatekeeper, of course, is a 12.8 inch wheelbase, so there's a half inch difference there. I actually found, though, if you line up the rear tire to be the center point for where your wheel needs to sit in that wheel well, it actually looks pretty accurate to have the front tires a little bit further forward. I actually think it looks pretty good, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. So, uh, top tip, you can make this work on a longer wheelbase truck. So there you go. A lot of things have changed since this was a fun haver, and uh, I'm really excited with what it's become. Will I ever do the fun haver? I don't know. Maybe. I've got the body still, so who knows? Uh, it might be a longer term project than the 11 months it's already taken. <laughs> I think that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy this sort of content. Uh, I really love creatively building projects, and I love doing builds that are inspired by artwork or other trucks that exist. So uh, if those are things you're interested in, uh, please stay tuned, because there will be a lot more. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.